Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here at Bauma 2022 with Andreas. You have got a really exciting product here. Tell me what it's all about as a product and why you've launched it here at Bauma. Yeah. Hello, Peter. It's good to have you here. Yes, we have here our new EW100. Uh, behind of us, what we have done here on the excavator is very important for us, safety, visibility. You yep. know, we have improved that to the front. That's very important that the, these guys have the best visibility to the bucket, to the attachment. That's a huge thing um, when it comes to safety. What else? With acting, working signal means with an LED bar when engine is on, right. means there is a signal for the guys around. Uh, be careful, there is some, uh, something going on. All the handles, all the steps in colored, just to make that visible and just making, getting these people easy out and in and uh, on the machine. And what's really interesting about this product is, you know, we look here at the, the oil quick, quick coupler and we're looking at a huge bucket, but we're actually quite a compact machine, aren't we? So there's a lot of power put into this machine, but with a compact radius, it's actually really, really suitable for, for the UK market, but also European markets Absolutely. where people are going to work in confined spaces. The power, though, is really important because you're adding a lot of hydraulic capability that this machine needs to deal with. You've actually worked with Perkins Engines, haven't you, on this particular unit. Tell me how you've worked with them to, mm. to develop the, mm. the, the product yep. and why that relationship's been so mm. important from the power and capability mm. perspective. Mm. So we are offering here two uh, engine sizes, 2.855 kilowatt and uh, 3.6 uh, leader 100 kilowatt Perkins engine uh, just during development phase as you said of course performance is very important for us on these machines what we like to do uh, hydraulically of course giving our customers a little bit more on yeah, when yeah. it comes to performance uh, and this little bit more on hydraulic of course needs the back-end power from the engines and Perkins is, is, is doing a, a great job there uh, a few other things on which is important, of course, size. You know, we're talking about compact machines. Yeah, yeah. Fit, fitting that engines, of course, with that power into our uh, area. Um, and uh, other things which are important uh, when it comes to engine, of course, is regen system. Very important, you know, just on the DPF. We do not have any switches for the operators. Just keep it it's simple. Just operate with, with the machine. Engine is providing you the power done. So very important for us. If an operator is in a higher fleet, they're not going to necessarily know the machine. So yeah. it's really important that, that that after treatment is just doing its job. And it does its job for the life of the machine, doesn't it? With the, with the Perkins setup Ab you Absolutely. Yeah, we have a lifetime uh, uh, DPF. So there is nothing to do during the lifetime uh, for the operator, just focusing on, on their job. And, you know, we together with Perkins taking care of the rest. Let's go and have a look around the machine, folks, because it is a really cool um, unit here. You talked earlier about the access and egress. And, you know, I'm down at ground level here. And so easy fills. We've got some really big steps here and we've got, you know, storage underneath. So. Fundamentally, I can get into the machine here quite simply. And uh, here is part of that machine. What are we seeing here? Again, it's really compact, doesn't it? All of this, um, this element of the machine here. What have we got inside here? You know, you mentioned the tank from ground level, important, but we also have with the big engine, uh, the Ed Blue tank, you know, more or less on the same spot, having yeah. everything here. Of course, easy to clean, you know, air filter, uh, having that ready. And very important, you know, behind the uh, um, air filter, we ha have our main valve. So yeah. short distance, you know, to the boom, uh, into the uh, swivel bracket, and having here uh, only straight fittings, just for perfect efficiency on the, on the system. And when you have got a lot of hydraulic need with, with this machine, there's hoses everywhere. Yeah. You actually have to protect those hoses and, and that's the way in which you've done that there gives added protection, doesn't it? Because fundamentally, one of those hoses goes and obviously the uptime is, is no longer yeah. there, is it? Yep. So yep. that's a real fundamental. And obviously when you've got all of those packed in here in this space, we need to find the space for the engine boat. <laughs> Let's go and find it, shall we? Come on. Oh, and there is the big reveal. Andreas, come, come over here with me. The big reveal, the big engine here, um, but it's actually not that big. That's the whole point of it. It's a compact engine for a compact um, wheeled excavator with Absolutely. a very compact back end, doesn't it? That has got to be really quite highly engineered to fit all of that engine in there. But stage five, uh, as I've been learning recently, 
you can get more power out of a smaller unit. And stage five needs to be run hard, doesn't yeah. it? To get the best out of the engine. And that's, I guess, how you've been able to put that in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for us again, you know, it's very important to, to get that power, you know, to the to the working uh, area. And you know, you mentioned the size. What else is very important here? We have all the runners on this very short distance, so we have the controllers with the batteries in there, just keeping keeping the runners harness as short as possible, keeping the temperature low in that area, and just uh, once again for lifetime of all the parts. And what's really exciting about that, folks, is you've got all of that packed in there. But fundamentally, we're talking about every drop of fuel. Nowadays, fuel is expensive. Mm. I talk about fuel in two ways. I talk about saving a drop, but I also talk about getting a lot of value out of each drop. And so tell me about you know, the whole setup here, the way in which you've done it. Mm. Fuel economy is really crucial right now, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, We're doing a lot here uh, together with Perkins. We try to, to write to get the right RPM setting yeah. where we get the power but still are in the perfect area of low fuel consumption. So we're running that machine compared to, to the older one around about 700 RPM lower, oh, right. uh, okay. which is very nice. Also with the high speed, we have an eco mode, means an, uh, uh, when we reach uh, the 40 kilometers per hour, we once again drop the RPM by 400 uh, uh, RPMs down, running that with 350 RPM. Uh, so once again, perfect setting on fuel consumption, taking that as low as possible. And you mentioned that, of course, using it in the best way means getting the power to the, to the working troop and doing, yeah. it, doing that. What else we have? Uh, we have auto stop means you know, okay. if you're not using uh, the machine, you know, engine is going down. Once again, uh, fuel saving, CO2 reduction, uh, which is required. And that's all about keeping that idle time away. Obviously, we have productive idle time when things are happening, but realistically, with a machine like this, you know, if you're not loading, if you're not working, you shouldn't be using fuel, should you? So that's Absolutely. fundamental to saving CO2 emissions, but also saving hours on the machine and maintenance costs, of course. So let's take another look around. Bye bye to the engine there, folks. And hello to the cab. And so again, like we said before, we've got all the access and egress. In fact, Andres, I'm going to get up in the cab and so I can see for myself what's going on. So Andreas, I've got a lot of height here. I can see a lot of people around the stand. <laughs> Touch screen inside here. Touch screen. Tell me about the touch yep. screen. Yeah, so we have here a 10 uh, inch touch uh, display. Means you can do all the stuff, you know, just touching, but still we have the chuck dial. So I don't know if you if you just think it's a better way for you yeah. and just for the operator, he could decide which way suits him best on just organizing himself uh, within the machine. And what we also see is seat mounted controls here, folks. Lots of buttons, lots of toggle switches, so that actually you can, as an operator, particularly when you're getting things like tilt rotators on the end of it, you can program this machine to do the tasks and the buttons, I guess, to do the tasks through the tablet. Absolutely, absolutely. So the, the setting of the joystick is set up together with all, all the manufacturers uh, from uh, tilt rotator stuff. So we are ready with that uh, 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 already on the joysticks. What else what we can do? Uh, as you mentioned, the different settings. Uh, what else? We have uh, operator profiles you can save yeah, right. with this different setting. Of course, you know, if you switch as an operator to a new machine, just program once and when you jump on again, just take your, your, your name and all your settings are here immediately and you can go to work. Great to learn about this new machine. All the best with it. I'm sure it's going to be a super hit because it's super small, but it's also super powerful, folks. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks.